continuing with plantar cerebellar hypoplasia in brain bit by bit, I would like to spend a few minutes on the embryology of the posterior fossa because this helps understanding plantar cerebellar hypoplasia and kystic malformations of the posterior fossa. And if you have a single MR examination with a small cerebellum, it is impossible to tell whether it is hypoplasia or atrophy of the cerebellar hemispheres. And when things seem complicated, I always go back to when things were simple. When there was a neural tube lining a cavity filled with amniotic fluid. And in the fifth gestational week, the secondary vesicles appear and three flexures, the cephalic, cervical and pantine flexure, which is important for the formation of the hindbrain. And on this histologic specimen of a six-week-old human embryo, you can see the pantine flexure and the fourth ventricle. And the lining of the roof of the fourth ventricle is very thin compared to the rest of the lining of the neural fluid cavity. And in the schematic drawing, in three planes, starting in the fifth gestational week when it was still a tube, you can see what happens in the hindbrain. The pantine flexure moves the neural tube anterior in the sagittal plane, bringing the metacephalon and myelencephalon together. And the cavity widens at the level of the flexure. And on the posterior side, it kind of diverges, pushing these borders outwards. And because this widens, the tissue gets thinner and thinner, eventually leading to one layer of ependymal cells and a thin layer of vascularized tissue called telechoroidia. In the coronal plane, the fourth ventricle resembles a diamond, so it's diamond or rhomboid shaped, hence the name rhombencephalon. And on the cranial and caudal side, the fluid cavity narrows to form the aqueduct on the cranial side and the obex going into the central canal of the spinal cord on the caudal side. This is a picture of a human embryo from 1914. And in this 106 year old embryo, you can see the transparent membrane covering the fourth ventricle. And the formation of the cerebellum is quite different from the formation of the forebrain and the cerebral hemispheres. Because the tissue that gets pushed aside forms the rhombic lips and this rhombic lips proliferate and migrate covering this membranous area forming the cerebellar hemispheres and in most embryology and anatomy books the belly is below but because we scan patients supine in the MRI I have flipped these images to match the MR situation and I will do that in the next presentations as well. These are MR microscopic images from fetuses of different ages and you can again see the simple neural tube here. The pantine flexure appearing and there's a little bit of cerebellum forming here. And a little bit later, there's a little bit of more cerebellar forming. And you can also see that the thin roof of the fourth ventricle has a fold in the middle. And this fold is the primitive choroid plexus. These are images in the coronal plane of a mouse embryo of 14 days. And you can see that the rhomboid shaped Fourth ventricle is divided into two triangles by this choroid plexus. 
and the upper triangle gets covered by cerebellum from the rhombic lips and the lower triangle becomes the aperture of the fourth ventricle. This is a red embryo where you can also see on a sagittal plane the rhombic lip and the choroid plexus below and from the rhombic lip the external granular layer forms the cerebellum and the cerebellum is also formed by proliferating neurons from the ventricular zone. So this rhombic lips moves down and in this dorsolateral schematic drawing you can see that the rhombic lip closes and covers the rhomboid shaped membranous area like the curtain in the opera. These are sagittal images from mouse embryos of 12 and 18 days and you can see the rhombic lip giving rise to the external granular layer and these are glutamate neurons and from the ventricular zone the GABAergic Purkinje's cells arise. And this is the opposite from what happens in the neocortex because there the glutamate neurons come from the ventricular zone and the GABAergic neurons migrate tangentially from the ganglionic eminence. So it's the opposite in the cerebellum and in the neocortex. The two different germinal matrices are also shown in this article from 2019 of human cerebellum in fetuses of different gestational ages and you can see the formation of the cerebellum, the appearance of the primary fissure and of the pyramidal fissure and how the cerebellum covers the roof of the fourth ventricle. And knowing that we have enough information to start looking at pantocerebellar hypoplasia. Thanks for watching.